Hey, Nostalgia Gogglers. Uh, I don't usually have to make these kinds of corrections, but later in this episode, I'm going to say that Smash Brothers Ultimate doesn't have uh, classic mode, and uh, <laughs> it does. Uh, I found it, and I've been playing it a lot, and I didn't get there originally because I was so engrossed in the story mode, but uh, I'm trying to make sure that you, the listener, can focus on, uh, let's say, positive feedback, uh, sharing your interesting thoughts and ideas with us and, and your nostalgia experience, uh, and preventing you, uh, let's say, saving you the trouble of having to send me a thousand tweets that say, uh, lol, there's totally a classic mode, uh, noob. So, uh, yeah, I know it's there. And when you get to that part of the episode, remember this part of the episode telling you that I know that it's there. No. The living room's dark save for light being cast From the big TV screen and the imminent sunrise That's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning Hey George Hey Lions, how's it going? Super Smash Brothers! So, what did we play? Uh, we played Kirby. Um, <laughs> well, actually, actually, I played Kirby, but, you know, <laughs> in Super Smash Brothers. Um, and I don't know if you, you picked it up, but but I actually um, called you Lines. Um <laughs> <laughs> because we had an amazing shout out on the on one of our uh, reviews where basically the person said like hey really like what you're doing and like he kept using, calling you lines l-i-n-e-s and i got a great delight at the very end because i was like oh man because literally when you sent that to me i was like do i need to enunciate that a little bit better until i got to the very <laughs> end where he's like oh wait i think his name is lions i've been calling him lions this whole time why didn't anyone correct me oh god i've been, I've been making, making an, an idiot, idiot of myself, myself. Yeah, no, I, I've, that's like, those are the moments as, as a, as an artist, as a person who puts things out into the world, like having that kind of little, uh, like I see you moment with a total stranger is deeply satisfying. Oh yes. No, because I, I was just kind of like, when, when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's a Simpsons reference. We, we, we have, we have good listeners. These are good people. Yeah. yeah I like this. This is, no, this, is no. this is good. I, I, I would high five that person. I don't know. Just go outside of your house, and if yeah. I hear you, I will come and high five you. <laughs> exactly. It will. It will be an epic five, just like the epic high fives that I was giving to people in Smash Brothers. Well, it was less high fives, more me. You know, it, it was an unreciprocated high five. Like I slammed into them with a high five, and since they didn't post up, I just hit them in the face. Hmm. What What could we call this unreciprocated high five so that people know what you're describing? How about this? What we could do is is come up with five different names, and I will slap bet you. <laughs> <laughs> that it's not one of those. <laughs> good, good. That's that seems like a fair bet. So <laughs> let let's do all that stuff at the front. We have to do. Uh, so uh, we played. <laughs> we played uh, Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo sixty four. So the original Super Smash Bros. Dot right. Yes. Um. Not melee. Not brawl. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, this game originally hit the earth in 1999, the year mm -hmm. of our Lord Neo and his father Morpheus, 1999. Um, yep. You and I played a lot of Melee together. Yes. A lot. And, and I mean, we, well, yeah. I was gonna say like to the point where we actually, um, because of it was in our college years, we, we <laughs> predominantly, we played a lot of Smash Brothers and we also played a lot of Smashed Brothers which was also a, uh, a a delightful game as well. But yes, no, we we played an unconscionable amount of this game yeah, of, like, of Melee. Not like, of, like a lot of people at that stage, right? I mean, this, this yes. was, that's like saying, oh, I played a lot of Halo. It's like, well, no kidding. You were that age and that like part of culture, right? So uh, what I was surprised by, though, when I was uh, grabbing the, the release here for this for one of the few things that goes into the show notes um, is uh, so the OG came out in 99, right? And then mm -hmm. Melee came out in 2001, and it's like, oh, wow, only two years between them. Huh, I wonder why Melee is, like, the one, right? Like, why is that right. the one everyone talks about? Oh, it's because there was seven years until Brawl came out. And Brawl is, like, I liked Brawl. It was fine. But, like, they yeah. changed some things in the balance that, like, 
made it kind of annoying when I had the better part of a decade to get used to how melee felt. So like that was too long. Like you can't, you don't wait that long for a sequel. Well, it's, 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 it's the D and D 4.0 to your D and D 3.5, you <laughs> know? It's true. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's the thing. And then, and, and, you know, like people come up to me and they're like, have you tried 5.0 yet? I'm like, man, I have looked at 5.0. It looks like an elegant system. There are definitely some things in 3.5 that they do way better. I am never going to play it because <laughs> I've been playing 3.5 for literally the entirety of my adult life. And uh, so, you know, that's, it's really unfortunate, but uh, no, it's, it's not, it's, it, it is, it is the Dragon Ball super, you know, it's just like, it's just not my, yeah. it's not my D yeah. you know? no. and D, you know, and thus brawl was not, my smash brothers yeah i feels you and so you uh you actually played the og smash brothers as a lad right yes okay yes, so i did so what are your nostalgic goggles for og smash um og smash for me is it, it was just another game that i owned and just played the bejesus out of it um i i don't i actually didn't play it a whole lot with like friends because i was sad and alone no just because it was um <laughs> just i don't know why it wasn't something that we we all played together you know i think if i had to guess it's because at that age we were viciously competitive in a not fun way mm. you know so like it, like it would it would actually like people would get really butthurt about like you know if you lost you know so it's just kind of like like games like that were not um really like our thing you know so but uh but that that being said though i mean i would play against computers and and you know like like blow through the story on all this like i i played i played this game quite a bit so i have no nostalgia goggles for the og smash all of my nostalgia goggles are for melee right um Mm -hmm. and then it's it's i did an interesting circuit right like like all of this has happened before kind of thing uh because we played the ever loving bejesus at a melee together and with mm-hmm. other friends and now enemies. And, uh, I, I then had access to brawl and I didn't really love it. Cause like the balance just felt weird and like it took forever to come out. And by then I was like, eh. and mm-hmm. then, uh, when the Wii U 3ds version was coming out, I was like, Oh, I would like to reincorporate this into my life. And so I actually went out and got the 3DS version and played it. I think I'm I'm not exaggerating. I think I literally played it twice for about a combined mm. 30 minutes and it it was like a it was like Barney Stinson's Lemon Law for dating. Like <laughs> like I just sat down across the table for from Smash Brothers 3DS and I was like neither of us really want to be here. So let's just call it quits. It's fine. I'll pay for dinner. We're done. Okay. Yep. Good. Nice to meet you. I hope you have a great life. And then uh, I kind of forgot about it. And I was like, oh, maybe the smash part of my life is just over. And then when Ultimate got announced, I was like, or maybe not. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, whenever someone says, uh, like, I don't want to sound racist. And then the next thing out of their mouth is deeply racist. Well, because that's that's how you preface. I mean, that's how. Yeah. Anytime somebody says, "I don't want to be racist," but and um, I pay my taxes are two <laughs> ways for sure. You know, somebody is about to say something irredeemably stupid. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to compare this game to Smash Ultimate, which I've been playing a lot lately. But but it's going to happen, and I will just try not to make it egregious. Yeah, and I mean, and that's the thing is that I I this was when I was replaying this, I did play this a lot as a kid, but I, there was definitely, I was just kind of like, alrighty, I'm going to go into versus mode and I'm going to turn it to like all the bombs and like, you know, super high, like ratios. That way I just have tremendous amount of bombs. I love doing that as a kid. And I was like, Oh, right. That's not a functionality that this game had. It was very similar. Right. To, yeah. It was very similar to um, playing uh, Mario Kart for the, the SNES versus Mario Kart 64, where I was like, why like like some of these mechanics are missing it's it's kind of like you know yeah so it it was it was definitely interesting but um but top of the hour visuals yeah um the graphics in this are a uh a cronenbergian horror and Ah. i was i was going to call them a love this is actually in my notes i was going to call them a lovecraftian horror and then i was like no because lovecraftian horror is like this 
fear of the unknown and the unknowable, right? Just mm-hmm. this this dreadful foreboding that the universe is out to get you in ways you cannot understand, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's not what this is. This is more like body horror. <laughs> Who's that famous body horror director? <laughs> so I had to look this up, and it's the you know the guy they talk about in Rick and Morty. It's, uh, we really Cronenberg up Pikachu in this game, there, Morty, <laughs> like. And and the reason I thought of that specifically is because Pikachu is way overpowered in this game. And we'll get to all that nonsense later. But I spent a lot more time with Pikachu than with some of the other characters. And his arms come from wherever they need to come from to be convenient. So, like, Donkey Kong is more or less, like, man-shaped, you know? He's, like, mm-hmm. he, I mean, he's a gorilla. He's shaped like a gorilla. And, like, right. Mario is more or less man-shaped, right? Like, Kirby is generic enough that he just looks like Kirby all the time but Mm -hmm. Pikachu and Fox and like some of Donkey Kong's facial expressions like they're not right they're not good they I can't (laughs) I don't believe that these ever looked good like I refuse to believe that people sat down in this game in 1999 and were like wow it feels like I'm there like they're just bad they're bad (laughs) it's interesting because I I when I was like kind of going back and playing it um I again for like the the typical like low poly kind of uh uh you know aesthetic which I mean again that's what like like kind of all everything that comes out of this this N64 era is not going to look clean. <laughs> um I definitely felt that, that Donkey Kong in particular his visuals are are in my opinion like his face is particularly egregious and the reason why that's so <laughs> noticeable is because you fight giant donkey kong yes in... where his horror face is half the screen <laughs> exactly you know so you're just kind of like hmm. but i thought that um i thought link and uh samus both you know looked pretty decent i thought mario and luigi looked about as good as mario and luigi or mario did in uh in the n64 one um yeah, it, I, I didn't really think that for me personally, I didn't and you know, this may be my nostalgia goggles, but I didn't really think that um that they were horrible. Um <laughs> I mean they're not good. I mean, like that being said, you know, I mean like this again, this isn't, you know, uh the Last of Us remastered, you know, for <laughs> for, for the PS4. Like this is definitely, you know, like low poly stuff. But I felt that um because I actually I one of the notes I had was I I reflected a little bit because I was like would this game have been better serviced to use billboarding, right? Mm. Where basically, you know, they could have just used two dimensional sprites, right? And then just, you know, put them in this universe. But which is, I think uh, that's 2.5D, where like the world mm. is three dimensional, but your experience of it is two dimensional. Right. Like you, where you can't travel on the axis, which you can't in this game. You can't go into the background or come into the foreground. Exactly, and and that would make the game nightmares to play. Um, but uh, the the reason why I think that because I thought about it, I was like they could have done that, you know. But the the problem is that they really um, a lot of times when like you'll get hit far away and stuff like that, they will actually change the camera angle a little bit Mm -hmm. to kind of like show you kind of like more of the universe and like the, like expand out and contract, you know, so the angle that you're looking at. And so I feel that that would have not worked in 2d. So, so they were like, all right, well we have to do 3d and, you know, and because it's a fighting game, we can't have it completely strain the processor. So we need to like poly it down a little bit more. (laughs) Um, And, uh, and I mean like, and we want there to be, because I, I think that they kind of focus more on the gameplay. Like we want there to be able to be four players playing this at a time, and you can't have like like Mario have fifty polygons. He can only have twenty five if you're going to be splitting them out with four <laughs> other people. So all, all I can think of is. is is like uh, the stereotype of you know the the boss in like his suspenders with the rolled up uh, white dress shirt sleeves comes in and is like, you know, I need this 10 minutes ago. And it's like, it'll be done in an hour. You've got 30 minutes, right? That kind of thing. Like, yeah. this feels like, like I need the most realistic Mario you can make. That'll take a hundred polygons. You've got five. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, well, this is what just, you get for five polygons. This is, this is what I can do, man. And I think that, so, and again, like, I think they, and I may be wrong. I mean, I, I haven't sat there and counted the polygons, but definitely if you look at like this Mario versus Mario 64 Mario, this Mario is lower poly, right? Oh, it, he, he is. He's, he's 
pointier he's the detail is is less like things like the brim of the hat the mustache that kind of stuff um but i will say like in in defense of those choices they were pretty thoughtful about the characters that they put into the game and just the fact that they could do this at all because of the way those characters had been designed historically because the colors and the general shape of all these characters is unmistakable like Mm -hmm. they could make mario with literally five polygons and you would never confuse him with donkey kong because even though they're both humanoid in shape donkey kong is brown and mario is red right so like even that level of simplicity really again for nintendo like when we've said this a million times is nintendo's really good at where can we make these trade-offs in a way that won't ruin the experience and like we talk about the visuals as how they serve as the gameplay like i never hurt for like oh who is this what am i looking at i don't know right. is mario throwing a punch or a kick i don't understand like i always knew what was going on everything just looks like garbage <laughs> i would definitely say that yeah things you know did, did, are, are, is this like beautiful you know like like no it's not it's not it's not it's not certainly not when you compare it to melee or brawl or any of the later games that actually do look nice now this this game does not I, this 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 game that you're not playing this for the visuals you know to be like oh you know mario looks looks amazing and it, the way it, it plays on my eyes is so good i do think that pretty much every decision that they made was in service to gameplay on this one you know yeah. and and i will um, say that nothing about the visuals i think detracts from the gameplay experience because even though pikachu's arms are coming from places arms are never meant to come from even on a little furry made up rat creature like it's still it's not like i'm playing the game and i'm like oh i screwed up that block because his arm looked weird for a second like that that never <laughs> happens right like so i i don't like these visuals as like standalone art pieces but they in no yeah. way detract from the game or the enjoyment of the game yeah and then, and i think that too one of the things that they did visually that um that i kind of liked was the fact that uh again and this is in service to gameplay which is that the camera uh, you know so obviously (laughs) unlike in mario where we complain that you can't control the camera you don't want to be controlling the camera in a fighting game mostly because that would just create like all kinds of cheese fighting like if you gave one player control of the camera they'd be like i'm gonna manipulate the camera so you can't see what you're doing (laughs) and then and then you know controllers would get broken over people's faces it would be a mess but (laughs) The fact that the camera actually dynamically zooms based off of like where everyone is, I really appreciate it. You know, so if if you're you know yeah, two players and you guys get really close, that camera gets really close on you, so that way you can see the nuanced movement. The further away people get, the further back the camera gets. That way everybody can still see what they're doing, but it won't zoom so far back that you can like, for example, like let's just say that Kirby gets knocked to the point where he's about to fall off of the screen, it won't zoom all the way back. So that way, you know, like you can see that it, it, they do a great job with the camera only zooms so far back that you need to be able to see, to interact with your environment, you know, because it'll, it'll cut you off and it'll just like represent you as a circle saying like, this is about where you're at. And that's all the information that you need because nothing's going to interact with you. You know, it's just, it's all blank space. All you need to know is about your height and position. You know, and then once you get to the point where you can start interacting with the stage again, then it'll say like, okay, we're going to zoom out and this is where you're at and, 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 you know? Yeah. Which, uh, Hey, there's something ultimate does. Um, when you get, (laughs) when you get, you know, smashed off the stage, it actually pops up a little overlay that is literally just two rectangles and a dot. And it lets you know, the inner rectangle is where the camera can see. And the outer rectangle is the outer bounds of the level. So if you are between where the camera can see and the outer bounds of the level, you are still alive and here's where you are. And yep. if you cross the outer rectangle, then you die, right? So it's like they let you know, and it's done in a pretty subtle way that isn't really distracting, but it's like, oh, I got blasted off. I'm not just in this general direction. Here's how far I am from crossing back into where the camera can see me, which is like, mm-hmm. it's actually a pretty neat little addition, but even long, cause this is the, as far as I can remember, the first game that did that was ultimate, but just having the little arrow with like the little character in the circle is like, Hey, you're not dead. 
but you're also not a combatant right now. <laughs> right. Well, and also, too, the the death animation, again, is very much so in service of gameplay because, like, you never question whether or not you died, no. you know? No, it's a huge column of light. It's just, like, the boom. Yeah, it's like, bam! And, like, they make their, like, like you know, like, ah! You know, like, I got I got, got noise. <laughs> and, uh, and, I mean, yeah, so you never never question that the other visual that that they do that i thought was particularly clever is when you've used your up b you know Mm -hmm. um attack right which is like your final jump right you you flash like a dim kind of like gray like your character the palette kind of goes darker and you're flashing a little bit you know because it like lets you know like you're spent like you that the the controller's not dead it's not that they gave you the player two controller which is always the worst controller (laughs) and that that's why you're losing you're losing because you you spent yourself and now you need to touch the ground again before you can can do that so like you know i always knew you know even you know if i you know jumped double jumped like hit somebody i did my you know circle up attack and then, you know, like I start to fall and then five other things happen because a million things are happening all at the same time. I'm like, oh, man, now all of a sudden there's a crate. I got to get there. And I'm like, why is it? And you look, and you're like, oh, well, that's because, you know, the visuals let you know you're not going to be able to do anything until you touch ground or until somebody pops you, I think. If I remember. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you take damage, it resets your ability to interact with the world, which is mechanically a choice i understand but also kind of a weird one because sometimes that actually disincentivizes you from hitting someone because you're like well they'll just fall to their death if i leave them alone which i I like is like a kind of a strategy you know because i mean that was the thing is that this game started it and then um later games and this is string a little bit in the mechanics like later games like like added new mechanics and added you know like the smash ball and all sorts of stuff you know but uh but i mean this game like even the og one there was always like some degree of like strategy to it like one of the things that i loved doing was uh like i pick up a lightsaber right and i'm who doesn't like beating on somebody with a lightsaber that's pretty cool um or i think beam sword because beam sword is the official name so lightsaber yeah so so so, dude you want to get sued (laughs) um is uh is you know like like you 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 smash somebody like off the side of the 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 world and then they're, they're like working and i don't know why it's particularly satisfying with kirby because he kind of like whoop, yeah. whoop. like he's like boop, boop, working boop. his way back he's like this cute little pink puff ball and you just calmly saunter over to the lightsaber pick it up walk over and you just like throw it like off the side of the stage and hit him and then they're like oh no it's just kind of like yeah that was just why, why use a beam sword when you can just throw it at a great distance at people the the only thing that i enjoy more than that is when you have been keeping someone from fully recovering with a projectile weapon, like the little laser pistol, which mm-hmm. I'm going to call a blaster. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just really want to bait George Lucas into suing us. Hey man, Actually, we, we, no, I at mean, this point it would be Disney, which is very litigious. So, <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> um, no. but yeah. So like you, you're like blast, blast, blast. And then you run out of ammo and then you Indiana Jones style throw the gun. Right. And yep. like, and then when that connects and that kills them, you just, right. Because like in every Superman thing ever, they throw the gun. He doesn't dodge the bullets, but they throw the gun and he dodges the gun. So I just love yep. the idea of being like, blam, blam, blam. Ugh. And like <laughs> that being the thing that does the thing. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and then one other thing that uh, I just want to touch on for visuals is um, the stages are very mechanically varied, which we can get into mechanics. They are also very visually varied, you know, like, so Kirby's is very like light and colorful and, you know, um, it has that amazing music, which we'll get into in music, but, uh, um, and then you have uh, like Star Fox's level where it is each level. They, they did a great job. And I don't know whether it's like blending the colors well or what it is, but all, none of the characters ever look out of place in any of the levels. But each of the levels do look like it, they were pulled directly from that game. Like, Zeb's looks like it is from Metroid, you know? Yeah, I, I suspect if you put, like, Super Mario 64 and the way he looks in Smash Brothers side by side, it's like, oh, this gray is a little different. It has, like, a little bit more yellow or a little less of this or a little more of whatever. Like, I'll bet they went through and rebalanced the color palettes but in really subtle ways so that 
like on a certain stage, Mario doesn't have a massive advantage by essentially being camouflaged, right? Because it's right. like, oh, in this one random stage, he just blends into the background is impossible to see. So there's there's a, a like a very subtle uniformity going on because otherwise you'd be like, these people don't feel like they're all in the same world. Mm-hmm. Right, because then they would just, it would kind of have a little bit of the, the Roger Rabbit where it's just like, oh, well, this is a cartoon and this is a real person. You yeah. Know? It also wouldn't surprise me, and I kind of wish I had done the legwork on this, but <laughs> I mean, honestly, they, this is a nuance I'm just thinking of now, and, and it, it would be so difficult to test, but it wouldn't surprise me if they actually toned down the brightness on the color palettes, depending on like what level you're on, you know? So like mm. when you're on Kirby's level, they just, they, they, they kick it up a little bit so that way everyone is a little bit brighter you know so that way fox doesn't look you know like this like noir detective <laughs> in you know this this bubblegum universe you know and, and and vice versa so i think that that wouldn't surprise me if in fox's level yeah they actually do tone down the colors a little bit and then in kirby's level they they, they tone it up it's like just a couple of notches but it it is uh, one of the things I learned, um, and I am by no means an artist, but um, yeah, I've, I, I've 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 dabbled. I've drawn a bunch of Dragon Ball Z characters when I was bored, not paying attention in high school. Never, um, never. Only after school, once homework was yes, finished. Yes, uh, Teddy, if you're listening to this, I exclusively <laughs> paid attention in school. Um, I, I, I never ever didn't pay. Just everybody, pay attention. Go to school. This school's important. Um, <laughs> but uh, I actually tried doing some pixel art at one point. You know, to just kind of do you know, just some 16 bit kind of characters. And, uh, and what blew my mind is if you move one pixel just into the wrong place, it screws everything up, you know? So like, and also too, you know, I've done some card art where I I had to like do some blending and you'd never notice the blending because it, it, it just looks normal. But if I didn't do it, it just stands out like a sore thumb, you know? So things like that, those types of choices, I'm sure they're making where they're like, uh, we need to tweak this a little bit because otherwise Mario looks like he is just done. It looks like it, Mario on Fox's level looks like Fox dropped a tremendous amount of acid <laughs> and then decided to go fight, Mar- you know, the colors. Yeah. I, I wonder if they're doing that with lighting because I know like mm-hmm. the Zeb's Zeb's Zeb's, Zeb's Samus's level is yeah. um, it's like dark. It's probably the darkest level. I think it's darker than Fox's level. So uh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Right, but I I wonder like if the actual dynamic lighting like in the game engine is what's different as opposed to just saying like we've blanket changed all the saturation in this level is like no this level is darker so everything looks darker because the light source mm-hmm. is less vibrant whereas in Kirby's level it's like okay the light source is on a thousand and there's six of them. So like everything <laughs> is maximally lit from all directions all the time because it's supposed to be this like cartoon universe. So that's, and again, like it makes everyone feel like they're all part of the same world. Like if Kirby was always full vibrancy, 100% saturation Kirby, and then you throw him into Fox, uh, Fox's level. Uh, what should we call Fox's level? Plane level area or what? <laughs> Corn area. Plane level, <laughs> yep. or, or into zebuses, um, Z- like it, Z- it would, the bebuses. Yeah, it would just it would feel weird. And in some ways, like I mentioned, like camouflage, but that would actually put you at a disadvantage because it's like, oh, everybody knows where I am because I'm the giant pink circle that stands out from everything. Well, and also too, I wonder if that would actually, like, if if you were you know the giant pink circle that stands out for everything, not only would it be a disadvantage from like a camouflage standpoint, but also a disadvantage to literally. People would just see you and be like, I, I need to attack an enemy and there is an enemy. And so mm-hmm. like, you basically aggro everyone to you because you're running around with a giant flare that says hit me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, overall for me, I, I think, like I said, like the visuals, I did not find them Cronenbergian personally, <laughs> um, but, but that being said, I, I definitely would not, you know, say like, oh man, dude, you got it. You got to check this game out. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't try to sell somebody on this game by just showing them screenshots of it and being like, dude, check this out. But uh, as far as gameplay, I think that, as we've noted many times with Nintendo, all of the visuals absolutely serve as gameplay, and I think very elegantly. Yeah, and they do, like, I'll I'll just, there's not really a lot to say about this. I just want to mention it, like, to be fair, which is (laughs) um, they didn't just pick characters that were, like distinct and unique and they didn't even just pick levels that are distinct and unique because like the Mario level and the the like 
the Link Castle, Hyrule Castle, and like Donkey Kong Country's treehouse. Like all those things look banana bungalow. It's a banana bungalow. Banana bungalow. Nice. Um, all of those things look really uh, like they're they're varied. They're interesting, right? That like you you have your favorite stage, you have your most hated stage, right? For mechanical and visual reasons and musical reasons, probably. Um, but the items also like there's no two items that look very similar, except where it's done on purpose, right? There's right. like the, the little bomb thing that when you step on it explodes. And then there's the other one that I think makes you invisible or was that melee? That's melee. Anyway, but even there, like it's the same idea. Like there's, there's the, the bomb that looks like the bomb and the beam sword. Mm-hmm. Like you're never going to confuse those two things, right? There's nope. even the beam sword. And then like, there's like the, um, the, uh, like the fan, one. it's like the hottie san, you know, like a Japanese style, like oh, folded yeah. fan. Like it's a huge, ridiculously giant like person sized fan so that even though it looks ridiculous when mario picks it up and it's the size of him it's like you can tell exactly what it is and because all of those visuals are so distinct you know how they're going to behave mechanically it's not like oh this is the blue hari san i meant to get the light blue one which behaves completely different mechanically like that would be really annoying with all this frantic nonsense yes agreed and the, the one uh one thing visually that I think is that, like you said, like all the items do stand out very, very well. Um, the only exception, which I love being the proximity mine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause which, that's that, its point. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. And I just, I just remember the, the tapestry of profanity <laughs> I would weave above my room. Like whenever you'd be like, cause it, it was bad when like somebody would like, like throw it down and you either wouldn't see it, you know, or and actually, it makes a very distinct clicking noise, which leads us nicely into audio. But um, uh, you know, like, and all was, like you, you, you know, you just wouldn't see it. Like they picked it up and threw it down really quickly, or whatever. That was always frustrating. But that 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 was never what killed you. It was always the one that you put down. <laughs> that it always was. You know, like you, you'd be like, I'm going to put this proximity mine down, and this person's going to walk over it, and the person would jump over. You're like, oh, don't worry, your uppins will come. Oh, look, there's a beam sword. I'm going to go get it. Blam! And you know, just like right off the level. You know, every time, man, it just yeah. I hated it. But yeah, no, that I actually, I if I recall correctly, for a while when we were playing melee. Uh, I would pick that up if I happen to be near it and then like chuck it off the level. <laughs> like <laughs> fool me once, fool me a thousand times. It's just like over the shoulder. It's like, uh, you know, where it's, it's like when you say your prayer before playing Monopoly, please Lord, give me the strength to not buy the railroads. All right, let's do this. I roll the five, one, two, three, four, five reading railroad. I'll buy it. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> just don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, so, so audio. What what are your what are your thoughts? So this is, okay. So <laughs> I was playing this with a friend a little bit, and they had a comment that I thought was really insightful. Um, wow, it must have been really easy for the composers to just cherry pick the most iconic music know, right? from all these franchises and then do nothing. <laughs> yep. And then there's also uh, basically the exact same thing for most of the sound effects it's like oh it must have been really easy for the sound effects designer to just cherry pick the sound effects from these other franchises and then like well that's lunch and like be done and and i don't want to underplay that entirely because i guarantee you that they recomposed this music and they they remastered it for this game and the sound effects were probably either ported from other n64 games or had to be made for this so that they would be you know leveled and balanced right like i i know work still went into it but very little creative work went into this this was this was like a manufacturing job like we're taking the mario song and putting it over here we're taking the donkey kong song and we're putting it over here like it's not like any composer was you know burning the midnight oil fingers in their hair in frustration like i just can't come up with good music for the pikachu level oh wait I'll use the Pokemon music. <laughs> yeah, I'll just use the Pikachu music. Well, and and here's the thing is that I think this this is what differentiates Nintendo from like other game companies, right? Is so with the visuals, right? They basically lifted probably those art assets directly out of any games that they had and just, you know, dropped the the poly on it or the, whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, 
Yeah, like, I mean, because I mean, like, you have the, to you have to rig the models to move. That's why I think those graphics are so Cronenbergian because they had to build a Mario model that could move in a way that they needed a fighting character to move, which up until that time, no Mario had ever moved that way. So that's why right. I think there's weird rigging and stuff that happens. So the graphics are probably all bespoke. The audio cannot make such a claim. Right. And so that's the thing is that like with the visuals, they said, and, and at a minimum, as you said, even if they had to rebuild them, they're like, well, we just need Peach's castle. It's like, well, we can't just lift it out. That's fine. It's like, yes, but you know what Peach's castle looks like. Give me that oh, yeah, for to- this. Totally. You know? yeah. We know what the, all of the character models need to look like. You know, we know what all of the music needs to sound like. We already know all of this creative work. Now, what I think set uh, Nintendo apart, though, is that, and we'll get into to this a little bit later. This is a little bit of a bridge, but um, is that instead of just saying like, okay, well, then what we'll just do is just make this quick, cheap, easy game we just throw all these characters together and then bam, easy money. That's lunch is they said, no, let's spend as much time, energy and love on this as we would on Mario 64 or Star Fox 64 or any of that. It's just now, since we don't have to spend so much money on all of these other assets, pour it all into the mechanics, you know, like let's really spend a lot of time thinking through each one of these things. Like let's take our time with this. And, and I mean, it's like a franchise now, you know, like it's a huge, a huge thing. So, uh, well, I, I um, hate to, to pull out lore, uh, but this is lore that came to me on its own. I didn't do research. So that, as um, long as it's not data, it's, it's okay to have lore. Ha-ha! What was his <laughs> daughter's really name? Proud of what I've done today. What? what was his daughter's name? Lol. Lol. Yeah. Yeah. I did it for the lols. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> that was no amazing. man, dude, dude, dude <laughs> a, a, anybody, any of our listeners who like, like, like watch TNG, they, they you just like, you just ruined their day. They're probably listening to this on the way into work, you know. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, yeah, I did it for the laws, and they're like, well, um, you know, today's gonna be uh, a little rough. <laughs> Unsubscribe. It was, uh, it was, it was Janet's birthday today, <laughs> and just, uh, I'm just gonna try not to cry into this cake, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm also proud of what I've done here today. <laughs> so uh, none of that is true. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think the guy's name is Sakurai, the producer, director, creator behind uh, this and also behind Kirby, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, Smash Brothers was originally made by HAL Laboratories before they were folded into Nintendo or, or I guess purchased by them. And uh, HAL Laboratories is also where Kirby came from. And I think we actually discussed this in one of the Kirby game episodes for that that we played previously. Is like Kirby was a placeholder art asset, and then they yes. were like, eh, ship, it. "Ship it." So uh, that actually kind of happened with Smash because he had this idea in mind for like this non like approachable, easy to learn but hard to master, approachable style fighting game that wasn't like. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or any of those kind of fighting games. And he's like, oh man, we, we need like characters to make it really obvious how like different characters behave super differently mechanically. Let's just, let's just use some Nintendo art assets. And they were like, okay. And then at this time, how laboratories was a separate company that is now using highly prized intellectual property in their murder each other simulator. And they go to Nintendo and they were like, Hey, we we were thinking about putting this game on Nintendo. Like, what do you think? And they were like, (laughs) hard pass. And (laughs) and just like, absolutely not under no circumstances. Are you allowed to make Mario and link simultaneously punch donkey Kong in the chode and butt respectively? Like, and they were like, yeah, okay. How do you feel about it now though? And they're like, no, 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 (laughs) we, we still don't like it. Mm, I understand. How about now? Okay, fine. Just ship it. So, like, <laughs> you're you're thinking about like all of their effort went into the mechanics and not into like the art style and the visuals and things is even more true than you know because <laughs> he had in mind exactly the game he wanted to build mechanically, and then I guess when it came time to design fighters, he was like, "Ooh, that sounds hard." You know what already exists, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. But yeah, no, and so one of the things though with the um again, so the the like so he the audio it's it's all it is 
you you can't say that the Smash Brothers, you know, playlist is not iconic. It is it is the I it is the hype. Yeah. You no, know, it, like, it is it is a uh it's it is the now that's what I call Nintendo CD <laughs> volume twelve. Like it's it's all high. There are no lows, it's just the greatest hits from that year. It's it's, it's kids pop fifteen, <laughs> but from for Nintendo. Nintendo pop. Um but uh one of the things they did with the the sound effects that I, I particularly enjoyed is that uh, in the same way that all of the weapons are very visually different, they all sound very different, you know? So again, there's no mistaking, and as I mentioned earlier, like with the proximity mine, you know, when you throw that and it hits somebody, you hear that click, you know? And I mean, like, similar, you know, to Sonic's running out of breath music <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> like the, the glug glug of like, I just got hit in Mario and I'm shrinking, like, like you just, I feel every time I hear that click, like I could feel a vice tighten around my heart a little <laughs> bit as I, as I could, could, could sense future me losing years off of his life. It was like that in Looper where like you see your <laughs> hand disappear, you know, <laughs> it, it was so, so every time that click would happen, that's what I'd hear. But, uh, you know, the same thing with, uh, you know, the like maximum tomato, when you pick that up, it makes a very unique sound. So, you know, yes, I did pick that up. It was a very distinct visual a very distinct sound. There's no question that this is a thing that happened. And I thought that that was very well crafted because I don't think that any two sound effects, like the way the beam sword hits is different than the way the fan hits is different than the way Kirby's wand hits is different than the way it sounds when you throw it at somebody. All of those are unique, you know? Well, and I, I think they, not only is that right up Nintendo slash Hal Laboratories, there's a reason they bought Hal Laboratories. They were like a little <laughs> Nintendo Junior, right? They had the same yeah. kind of spirit in them. Um, but <laughs> making everything hyper distinct and hyper unique and not relying on like lazy similarities and lazy, the lazy kind of palette swapping is their MO anyway. But I think the super unique sound effects also really help the uh, the camera zoom you were talking about. Like if the camera has zoomed way out because we're in Hyrule Castle, which is a gigantic stage and there's four people and two people are fighting over there and two people are fighting way over there. So the camera's like maximum zoomed out. I, I kind of need those sound effects to help reinforce what I'm seeing visually because everything is very frantic and the camera's way, way back. So those sound effects, which it's not like they muffle, you know, when you're up closer, I don't think the sound effects are any louder. And when you're out further, I don't think they're ducked maybe a tiny bit but I, I don't think so so you always can rely on like oh i swung the 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 little star wand and it makes the star wand noise so i know like because that noise happened when i pressed buttons i know that i'm still holding it you know so, right. so like those those kinds of little uh reinforcements are way more utilitarian when things don't all sound the same like oh do i have the purple star wand or the pink star wand like that would be really annoying Yes, absolutely. And then one other sound effect thing that I, I wanted to touch on is I really liked that, it, it, and there's there may be more, but I think that there's three distinct sounds for making player making contact with player, right? There's the punching, like bludgeoning sound, slashing sound, and like energy sound, you know? That Yeah, there's probably some a little bit of variance in there, but generally speaking, that's probably a good base yeah, those are probably like the three buckets, and there's there's like you said, there's probably a little bit of tweaking in there. But I think that um, that that's that's useful for two reasons. One is that it would definitely feel again like those li uh, those little nuances that you're like, yeah, this probably wouldn't make a big difference. But if you didn't do it, it would absolutely make a huge difference. It would sound really weird if Link, when he hit somebody with his sword, it made the same sound as Kirby <laughs> kicking somebody. Yes, you know, totally. Yeah, you can't yeah. just have generic contact made noise number six like you right, you need like, you need it to be an appropriate sound effect and and i also found it helpful because again you know there are definitely some characters that um have similar sound effects you know but that being said is um generally like if i was playing as link and let's just say that you know I, like you said i'm off to the side 
fighting somebody else is super frantic and i need to know like we're, we're both swinging on each other i need to know who's connecting mm-hmm. well if i'm hearing a lot of slashy slashies then i link am connecting if i'm hearing a lot of bludgeoning sounds then i am probably getting bludgeoned you know yeah now there's definitely for you know if mario is fighting donkey kong right that gets a little kind of confused but because there is some baseline variants like i remember when i was younger and i think melee does this to a degree as well but is that you know i would if i was playing as mario and was fighting let's just say you know fox and they both make a lot of bludgeoning sounds i wouldn't go into that little or i was more reluctant to go into that little area in the side where the zelda tower is because i can't really see what's going on and so then all of a sudden i've got to like now keep an eye on my percentage to see if i'm taking damage or not because i can't hear it you know, so it's so you, it's, you, again, you know adding some depth. What, I know the later games did this. I'm almost positive the original one did this, so I'm going to talk about it as if they did it. But uh, the the way I think they accounted for um, like Mario, Donkey Kong, and Captain Falcon all make punchy noises when they connect is there's a lot of bruce lee whoa in going on right Mm -hmm. so like when mario punches or kicks or does almost anything there's a lot of like yeah like a lot of mario noises right and like Mm -hmm. donkey kong makes like little kind of like grunting donkey kong noises right because he doesn't really talk um and uh captain falcon makes more like normal man noises right like not cartoony man noises like normal like uh, like kind of right and so if you have Mario and Donkey Kong just slugging it out and you keep hearing like, like, huh, wah, he, ha, like that's a pretty good indicator that you're the one, if you're Mario, you're the one successfully <laughs> throwing punches, right? Because you're getting the Mario punching noise. So even if the glove on flesh noise is the same or really similar for those different punchy, kicky characters, the like the Bruce Lee, like wah, noises that go with it, adds that extra little spice you need to tell the difference and that that's like that is there's no way that's an accident right like that's the same kind of thing they were like we need a little bit more of a way for someone to keep track of what's going on in the melee (laughs) well i think that um and i think that this is where another place i i I don't work for nintendo i have an uncle that did Ah. Uh, he told me a lot of stuff (laughs) but but uh, I don't work for Nintendo, so I don't, I don't really know their inner machinations. But I have please, to please. believe please, please, Nintendo they... is my father. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I really have to believe that they, um, they, they just rigorously play test their games, you know? Because I don't think that there's any way that somebody could say, look, man, if we're going to build this game out, it's going to get super frantic at some points. And players are going to need to know when they are doing damage, when they don't have a good keen eye on the visuals. No, what probably happened was that they were just play testing it and play testing it. And they're like, you know, what's really frustrating is the fact that, you know, when I'm in this position or whatever, I have no idea if I'm doing damage. And they're like, okay, drill down into that. How can we fix it? And then somebody would probably just say like, well, what if the characters were making noise while they do that? And be like, yeah, no, that, that is an adequate solution. It's a very, um, almost like, like lean six Sigma kind of mindset where it's just kind of like, don't, don't shove problems under the rug, shine a huge light on top of them and then fix them. Speaking um, of huge problems, um, <laughs> Having played a lot of Melee with you and having played a lot of Ultimate over the last two or three weeks, um, I can tell you that the original Smash has way, way, way more crowd noise than any of the later games. <laughs> Those people never shut the hell up for a single friggin' second. Like, they're always cheering or gasping, or there's just so much damn crowd noise. And, like, I, I don't think it was harmful but i appreciate it being toned down in the later games because just like at a real sporting event like if you were watching i don't know like basketball has like a lot of frantic action right so if you were watching a basketball game and every single pass and every single dribble and every single shot was just whoa (gasps) right like it, (laughs) it would just it would suck a lot of the tension out of it because it's like it's crowd who cried wolf syndrome So I I appreciated it because I like those are some of the only like Smash Brothers specific sounds, right? Like everything else is like, oh, that's from Mario. That's from Star Fox. That's from, you know, Metroid or whatever. Like 
art assets and audio, but the the visuals of like the 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 damage meter because it's a pretty unique kind of damage thing. We'll talk about in a second, but uh, the visuals for the damage meter and the audio for the crowd noise is distinctly smash. And mm -hmm. I really like the crowd noise. I really like that they kind of toned it down in later games and made it so more dramatic things had to happen before the crowd noise came in. Um, and and I do I do though appreciate the chanting. If I'm like 200 percent damage and they're like go link, go link, go that makes me feel good. So that that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I agree with that, and I think that you're right in because honestly, a lot of times like, I just tuned it out. You know, like unless it was like the the chanting, which you know normally was that that was like a high bar to get to because when I, I I always loved it when you know I just knock three people off so like you do this one amazing move and just everyone who's at like 150 percent just all fly off the level and they're like kirby kirby i'm like yes yes, yes love me <laughs> you know are you not entertained <laughs> oh man now i just want to see kirby like just like like you know i juxtaposed for maximus you know just like are you not entertained but anyways that is um, how he would sound he would that would be his voice I imagine that Kirby, I don't know, actually, I'm, I'm working through this headcanon right now. What if Kirby was a lot like Black Bolt, you know, where like it, he, he does on. have a speaking voice, <laughs> but it's just so powerful that it destroys mm. anything. Like if he if you ever heard Kirby's real, no, real voice, it would destroy you. So it's like the you know? voice of God in Dogma. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm I'm on board with this now. That's, I mean, he does, he makes some, you know, he does the, like when you do the, his up smash, I think is the sword. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So he makes some noises, but maybe his speaking voice is when it, you know, skulls explode and lives are tragically ended. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking that it is, is that those sounds that he makes are just what he sounds like. So that way he can, you know, be making some kind of noise, but like, he's like, yeah, e and all this sort of stuff. But then all of a sudden, like, like at one point, like somebody says, like, like, what are you going to do, Kirby? What are you actually going to do? And he goes, kill you. And then <laughs> it's just like in this deep, resounding baritone. And it just like, like the, 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 the tree in the background that like is anthropomorphized, like its eyes go wide <laughs> and it's blown apart, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, what were we talking about? Oh, right. Do you have anything else for sound? Uh, you know, I don't think I do. We can probably talk now about uh, controls and mechanics. And I do need to specifically call out the controls because we often lump these things together, but not this time, sir, because uh, the, the, the stick, the you know, the joystick on an N64 controller, um, it was clicky, right? Like, the, there's the, the 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 points of the compass are like clearly defined mm -hmm. and i think that wasn't a decision they made for smash obviously but it was a decision that the mechanics in smash really benefited from because your you know neutral a your side a your up a and your down a are all really really different things and with all the nonsense going on you need to be pretty friggin' confident which one of those things you're inputting. So if you had like a mushy stick, like a modern one that's like, you know, moves freely in all directions and doesn't click into place, you you would screw that up a lot. And having played more modern Smash games, I'm confident in saying you would screw that up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I appreciated is like, oh, they were definitely thinking you will know when the stick is all the way up. You'll know when it's off to the side. You'll know when it's down. And having grown up playing a lot of games with a D-pad and having to mash up and mm -hmm. right at the same time to get upright, um, yeah. I think I would actually enjoy playing Smash with a D-pad and not a stick because there's, you're not moving in three dimensions. You're moving in two dimensions. A D-pad is great for that. <laughs> and uh, just a, a minor thing to blow your mind a little bit. There is no side B attack in Smash. Well, not then. <laughs> nope. <laughs> when you were like, when you were like, you know, didn't oh, I say yeah, side yeah, you're, A? You're... I meant to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, there is no side B. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There is no side B attack. Like, yeah. there's up B, down B, and B. It yeah. wasn't side B. 
was introduced in Melee. Ah. And I, I know that because uh, I, I definitely was like, all right, let me run through this. All right, up B, down B. Okay, all right, side B. Side B. Really, side B and B are the same thing? No, that's because there is no there is no side B. <laughs> it's just saying you're, you're hitting B. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's kind of like one of those things where it's it's you just you forget about it because, again, you play so much Melee that, you know, you just you get used to that. Um, I don't. So, I yeah. And for the controls, I think uh, I, I agree with you. I think it's good that 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 locked into place. I don't think that we can talk about mechanics without talking about the the health mechanic. Oh, in yeah. this game because that's it was i th- I still can't think of a game offhand i cannot think of a game that did, did health like this before and i don't think too many games have really mimicked it because it's just so unique to smash but yeah the, I, I, I definitely if i have seen this other places i was i thought of it as like oh look they do it like they do in smash and then i just filed that away as a smash thing yeah um, although uh, somebody, I, I saw a thing online recently that I thought was a great analogy. Somebody said, uh, your age is like your percent in smash. Jesus. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, isn't that like horribly existential like this? Like, but yeah. And I was like, that holds up actually, which is just the, the higher your age goes, the more likely that the same hit that you took when you were 35 knocks you off the planet this time. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Janet. There's going to be a lot of teas, t- tears in your birthday cake today <laughs> between lol and, and, and this stuff. Anyways, but uh, yeah, so I really think that I, I, I don't want to say that it's the right choice for this game because I just, again, it is so inherent in the game. It, it would be impossible to divorce these two things. But uh, I think it's very interesting and, and I really enjoy it because as opposed to like a life bar, right, which is that's absolute. When your HP hits zero, you are dead. You know, um, this is not that you can definitely I mean, I remember sometimes people playing up to 300 percent health, you know, and just being so frustrated. Like, how are you doing this? I keep hammering you. You're Kirby. You shouldn't be able to <laughs> do this, you know, like and And so it has like this additional layer of skill and agency, you know, where it's just kind of like, man, you know, you can keep hammering me. I'm just going to keep just slowly working my way back. And um and yeah, and it causes kind of a, a breathing a little bit in the um because there is that intensity of the fight, right? But the higher up you are in your percent, you get hit and it actually creates this kind of pause in the game, you know, because now you have to come back, you know? Mm-hmm. So you the player get a little bit of like that release in your tension cycle, or you are given time to go deal with somebody else, you know? So it's not always if there wasn't this throwing mechanic it would just be a constant mess of like seven-year-olds playing soccer you know (laughs) they're just all crowded around the ball at the same time if you're all in the scrum there's no one to pass to (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah so i think that i think that's really interesting and just amazingly well done i mean i whoever came up to that i hope that employee was properly incentivized well, and it, it's, it does a bunch of interesting things, right? So one is what you just described is like that kind of moment to breathe because in a one-on-one fight, that not only creates a moment to breathe if you are winning, it creates a moment of unbelievable tension if you're like tied up because you had the upper hand, which is why you have now knocked them away, but they're coming back. And you're going to have to re-engage. And that time, you may not have the upper hand. And if you're near the edge of the screen, they may knock you off and you won't be able to recover, right? So there's it it creates, if you have the upper hand, I think it creates a moment to kind of almost like gloat. Because in later Smash games, they added taunts, right? So You can taunt in this game. Can you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's with the stupid C-stick or (laughs) C-pad. Who touches those buttons? They're just up there being jerks, breaking the camera in Mario 64. (laughs) Um, yeah, so like you you have the moment to like taunt, right? And then uh, if you are more damaged or a comparable amount of damage, it, it creates this tension where you like you know you're about to re-engage combat. Um, another thing, and and I don't know exactly how the math works out for this in the background, but if you're in a large stage, like say say we're in in Hyrule Castle and we are way off to the right, and I hit you toward the left. You may be nowhere near going off the screen to the left, 
but sometimes you will die by hitting the camera or flying off into the background. So mm -hmm. the, the damage mechanic is mostly a safety net, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm really hurt. So I'm going to move to the far end of the screen, but try and stay on the opposite side so that if I get smashed, I don't go rocketing off because I have all this extra breathing room. But sometimes like you roll those dice, Raggedy Man, and like you end up flying into the camera or way off into the background. And I'm not totally sure I know how to replicate that on purpose. I don't know if there's like, oh, this will almost always lead to that outcome or not. So I think, um, it, and, and I may be wrong, I think that the flying into the camera thing, I'm, I'm confident that's a melee thing um, where you hit the the front of the camera i don't remember i, I definitely oh, did not have it that is always it. only off to the back yeah it's only off to the back and it's and if i remember correctly it's it's when you are are knocked off the screen up you know but is i feel, I feel like if you're knocked up is that the only way you can die it doesn't do the giant column of light only for the top of the screen i believe so i i'm not i'm not sure i again i did not stress test that yeah. you know Mostly because, to be honest, the the one place where I was just kind of like, okay, you know, I, I I played through, you know, on easy mode just so I can see some of the, the story stuff. Um, and then, you know, when I was playing, I was just kind of like, all righty, all right, it's time to do versus mode. Do I still have the skill to beat a computer on level nine? <laughs> and the answer was yes. And nice. I was very happy with that, you know, but I was just kind of like, and it was, it was, I, I was playing as Kirby and it was Donkey Kong. Um, and, 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 you know, we're, we're going and we're slugging it out. And like, we're, we're both, you know, like I would kill him. He'd kill me. I'd kill him. He'd kill me. But I had him up to like 150% health and I was down to, and I was only at like 70%, you know, damage. And, uh, and then he got a maximum tomato and <laughs> I had my all is lost moment. Cause I was like, well, darn it. That's game, man. Like now, like I was just barely holding on, but then I had like that God of war moment where I was just kind of like, I was like, no, I've got more in me. And I like doubled down and, you know, got my Spartan rage and then just, <laughs> yeah, just, just beat, beat, beat donkey Kong to death. So that's, that's Kirby's voice actor. The guy who does Kratos in, <laughs> in the newest God of war, yes. that guy needs to be the actual true voice of Kirby. Yes, done, sold. It, <laughs> ship it, N Nintendo at us. Um, <laughs> uh, so, also speaking of like uh, you know mechanics, is I just and you kind of alluded to it before. Um, all of the care it is good that all the character models are very different because all of the characters fight so differently, and that is so enjoyable. Yes. You know, yeah. There, there's, there's no Ken and Ryu are essentially the same characters. Crap going on here. Everyone is. 1000% different which is something that actually got super muddied in the later games well and i think that there's the there there are two characters that play similarly which is mario and luigi and i think that that's kind of you know and that's and not kind of that's, okay, like, that's not laziness though that's yeah. by design yeah that is that is by design and I'm i'm kind of okay with the fact that later games um didn't you know like i don't think that everyone has to be completely different one of the things i kind of liked is that for example captain falcon and ganon are very similar but they do have like some slight differences so it's just kind of like do you, do you want to play captain falcon but like heavier and you know it's like well then play as ganon so they do have those what is almost a palette swap you know like play play as red captain falcon <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> but uh but i mean the fact that yoshi is completely different moves differently acts differently than kirby acts differently than you know donkey kong they're all so different and i think that that's one of the reasons why i liked this game way more than any i never really got into the street fighters i mean mortal kombat i played for the reason that everybody our age played it at the time for the blood you know because yep. yeah but uh but you know i really love this game is because you know yeah you if, if somebody played link it, this is one of the games where even a more casual player would have a main, you know, like if you talk to somebody in smash, it's like, Oh, you play smash. Who do you play as? Like, that's almost yeah. always the immediate follow-up question because it is actually, you know, an informed thing, you know, if, and, and even somebody who plays casually, they're like, Oh, well, you know, I've only played it a few times, but I always play as this person. Right. You know? And, and that also tells you like, it, it's almost like a crappy, 
horoscope or like a personality, like a Myers Briggs, because yeah. someone who says like, "Oh, I'm really good at Smash. I play as character you would not expect." It's like, ah, this is someone, right? If if you have like a stereotypical fourteen year old boy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I only play as Jigglypuff," and it's like, "Oh, he must slay with Jigglypuff," right? <laughs> like. The, it's unlikely if we're talking about in stereotype land, like it's unlikely that that's just his super favorite character out of all these characters. Right. And, right. and so if, if someone's like, you know, Oh, like I, I play sometimes, like I like to play as Kirby and it's like, Oh, you just like that character. So you're playing right. as Kirby because you like Kirby, which is totally fine. But like for me, like I definitely started playing as link because I like link as a character and then that later informed how I played all of the future games because I had this foundation of like, oh, in Smash, this is how fighters move. They move the way mm-hmm. Link moves. And then you try and play as like Pikachu and it's like, this is weird. <laughs> no, I, I really want to see like for, for Melee, you know, the person that's like, you know, oh, you, you play Melee, you know, like the, the you've got the, the, you know, stereotypical jock with like, you know, sideways hat and like just ripped, you know, like. And it's like, oh, do you play? You play melee. Who do you play as? Like, oh, I play as Princess Peach. Well, uh, I'm not sure say, that I want to play things. with you because you're gonna <laughs> beat the unholy bejesus out of me with Peach. Because, you know, like you said, like you just must ruin people with Peach. Um, yeah, and I and I like, like you said, and I I always enjoyed kind of. I, I would have you know whoever my main was, and then somebody else who was my weighted clothing. You know where. Like, for example, in Melee, it was Bowser, right? Bowser mm. was, like, my third tier. So I could play as him and do okay. You know, so whenever, like, somebody new would come over and we would just be playing, I'd play as Bowser. And then when they'd win, I'd be like, all right. And then switch over to Marth and be like, <laughs> okay. Let's let's cue that back up, you know? <laughs> and and this is, this is a tangential thing. But one of my favorite things in, I think it's in, in Melee or Brawl. I can't remember which. But Bowser, when you could play as Bowser, right? He um, had a specific move where basically he would grab you, and then if you hit forward, he would like sumo slam you, right? Oh no, you definitely did this in melee because uh, I remember he hated that. Yeah, but more importantly, <laughs> is I remember watching you use this as a way to get revenge on your old roommate when he was like playing cheaply. <laughs> yes. So basically, you grab them and you like kind of sumo slam on top of them. And the awesome thing about that mechanic that you don't really think of is it means that the character has to be beneath you, right? So I was playing with the, our old roommate, and it, I would I would normally do this once to a person as a joke, you know, like like be like, "Haha, look, it's a funny thing." I know that was really frustrating. I won't do that to you again. I did specifically to him because he was a jerk, but um, <laughs> oh, he was he was playing as a jerk. He was yeah. behaving as a jerk, um, and he was a jerk. <laughs> uh, but no, um, but anyways, no, I grabbed, um, you know, I, you, you grab him, right? So like he, I was at like 250% with one stock left and I had just killed him, right? So now he, he was at 0% with one stock left and I grabbed him and I took us both off the side of the level because the thing is, because you're sumo slamming them, it is a suicide, but they die first. Yes. And, and the battle immediately stops. It's yep. not it's not like game and then there's a few more seconds. The second th- the loser the the winner is known, everything stops completely. So, yes. yeah, totally yeah. viable strategy. Cheap. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, no it, it is definitely the 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 camping of of <laughs> melee where it's just kind of like what is a legitimate tactic you're spawn camping. It's a legitimate tactic, you know, like <laughs> but uh but yeah, no, so I, I did think, I just, I really do enjoy all of the variation of the the different characters. It is a delight to switch between them, you know, because, I mean, you could be like, hey, I, I want to play some Smash. I don't really want to play this. Like, I'm going to try Kirby, actually, you know? Like, let's just see how that plays out. Well, especially so. for characters like Fox or Samus, who just have built-in ranged attacks. Like, if you get married to those, and then you're like, oh, what's it like to play as Jigglypuff? or donkey kong and they're like oh i have to be right upon right <laughs> like yeah, i I've, I've been different. fighting in the mid to long range and now like i have to get deep into the fray i can't you know shoot them in the face as i'm retreating and so there's uh not only some 
mechanical differences that would be enticing, but you can realize like handicaps you've built into yourself. Like for me, it is the up B with link where it's just like, like, uh, 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 up B and you just knock everyone away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, 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 bad day, bad day. Yeah. So there's the, when I play as characters that don't have that kind of like, get me out of this situation up B like that's, it changes the way I have to play tremendously because I'm terrified of getting like ganged up on. Right. So I, I play in a way more defensive kind of way, even if I'm playing as a character who should be more offensive, like that's a handicap I've built into my play style. Yeah. And then one other thing that, um, well, two things that I want to touch on. One of them is, uh, as the characters are very mechanically varied, the stages are very mechanically varied, which oh, yes. I really, I mean, there's a reason why if you are about to have a grudge match with somebody, you always go to Hyrule Castle because it is like <laughs> the standard, you know, there's no weird like because Corner- Corneria is also very or or what, 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 what do we decide to call it? Starship level? Starship, Starship level. level. Yeah. yeah. No, um, plane, is plane, also, plane level, plane level, plane level. So plane level is also very plain. Um, but, uh, but it I does have this, the ship, the Star Fox's ship that will come out and start taking pot shots at you. And if you die that way and you're having a grudge match, the entire match is void. Yeah. You know, like you, 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 you would just throw the whole thing out, you know? So that's why, you know, if you're going to do a grudge match, you do it at Hyrule Castle. So, but then, you know, Kirby's level has the wind blowing. Mario's level has that weird thing that moves back and forth at the bottom, which is so frustrating because Mario seems to always know exactly what side of the level to be on. And whenever (laughs) I start to knock him off, he's like, well, I'm just going to go to this convenient platform that's right over here. And I'm like, I'm going to end you. (laughs) Um, You know, so they they, they all have very different feels. So as opposed to just like, oh, I want to fight on this level because I like the way it looks. You can do that. But a lot of times it's like, I'm going to fight on this level because I like the way it behaves. And I think that that's really, again, really cool and really thought through. It is. And and I think there's uh, an important thing we... I, I want to make sure we mention because it's, I think this is a contentious thing. Like people feel strongly about the non level levels and the variants that are sprinkled in throughout the story mode. Because uh, when most people think of smash, I suspect they are thinking of verses, right? Whether it's against the computer or their friends, they're thinking several Nintendo characters beating each other to a bloody pulp and that's the thing. But if you play the story mode, even going all the way back to the original Super Smash Brothers for the 64 that we played, you have all these like weird variances to like mix it up. So it's like, here's a level with 30 Kirby's in it. Here's a level where you have to smash these targets and it's like a platforming level. Here's a level where you have to jump on specific platforms and turn a light from one color to another color. Here's a level where you're running down a hallway and people are trying to murder you, but don't murder them back because you're trying to run down the hallway. Right? So there's metal Mario, right? Where it's just like your opponent is made of, it's a friggin' T-1000 from Terminator 2. Like <laughs> it's, it's a lot of nonsense that is nowhere present in the versus matches where it's just like you and the computer or you and your friends murdering each other. And smash has a weird history with the, the nonsense levels. Like, I think the original Smash actually did the nonsense levels really well. And they're they're varied. Like the target smashing one is different for each character because they have different uh, like movement capabilities and, and long range attacks and things. And then uh, like Melee had like a kind of okay story mode, but it was like a little frustrating. And then Brawl had a terrible story mode where they were like, what if we made a platformer, but with fighting game controls? That'll be fun. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> And now, like, I don't remember what the one on 3DS was like, because who cares? But now, like, the one on Ultimate, the story mode is a thing. It's like a whole huge thing, because there's so many characters, and that's how you unlock them all, and or it's one of the ways to unlock them all, and it's it's really well thought out, but it's missing some of the silly nonsense of, like, smash all these targets! And, like, I kind of miss that. Like, I sort of liked mm. the silliness of jump on these platforms, smash all these targets because the story mode in ultimate is just what are the most insane variations of the rules we can come up with to make this battle slightly different from every other battle. Right. And, and some of the rules are like 
the camera randomly flips upside down or your controls randomly mirror the left and right buttons or like the floor is poisonous. Like I'm serious. Like (laughs) there's some really weird rules or like, that doesn't have the same charm as what if there were 30 Kirby's like <laughs> that just that feels like sillier and like more interesting. And, and plus you feel powerful smashing all of these Kirby's left and right. And I don't know, like I just, the story mode has never been the star of a fighting game. It's like there because it has to be there for mm-hmm. people who play alone or prefer to play alone. But I don't know. Smash has like a weird legacy of, of the story mode. It's just always been weird. And I, I honestly think smash for 64 may have had the right balance. Like they may have gotten it closest to correct. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have not played ultimate and that sounds wild, but, um, uh, no, I, I think that, that, yeah, I, I, I do have a fair amount of nostalgia for this, but, uh, I, I think that, um, you know, I think that they were kind of good. They, they made very clean choices. So, you know, they were like, okay, well, what if we did one where it's like many, many, many opponents? It's like, well, well, how would that make sense? Well, uh, it would make sense with Yoshi because there are lots of Yoshis. And it would make sense with Kirby because even though there aren't a lot of Kirbys, Kirby wears, well, he wears many hats. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, the, the audience couldn't see you like light up and then it was all a lie as your face immediately went dead <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like a half second after that. <laughs> Um, so do you know, <laughs> real quick, uh, my favorite thing about the the 10 Kirby's or 30 Kirby's, however many Kirby's you fight, is all of the Kirby's are the Kirby's of the other characters. The mm-hmm. last one is the true Kirby. The last one is the non-powered up Kirby. And I appreciate that kind like that's just Nintendo all over, right? Like that kind of attention to detail where it's like, oh, it'll be all the different Kirby's. Well, when when should the regular Kirby come out? Last. Of course. You <laughs> save the best for last. And uh yeah, no, so I thought that that was um yeah, I, I, you know, I really enjoyed that. Uh and yeah, so the story mode is like you said, like you're not you're not playing for the story. And and the nice thing is that um, and this actually leads nicely into the the other thing that I wanted to mention, which is that in versus mode, you can pick computer players. So if you don't want to deal with none of that, then you can just literally put yourself against five, you know, three computer players and crank them all up to level nine, put them all on a team against you, and then just lose your mind. You know, like that is the maximum level of difficulty, which is kind of the thing I want to touch on is, you know, in story mode, you can pick like, all right, I want to play on easy, normal hard whatever right but again it's a fighting game you're not playing it for the story right so if you but because of the way they set up the computer players and the fact that you can put them on a team or have it be a free-for-all whatever the basically the gradations you can get on the difficulty curve are completely in your control and insanely nuanced you know because you know there was like i remember i i didn't have quite the time to get into all the different gradations this time i was I, I more so said can i still work out at 10 times gravity can i beat the level <laughs> nine computer i can okay good did some more stuff and then i, I called it a day but uh but you know so you know, originally I, I would like play against one level nine computer could beat him play against a level nine computer and like a level four computer you know play against two level nine computers but i have an ally but i only put him at like level four so that way he's really more like cannon fodder and just keep him <laughs> off me for a little bit and then like drop him down to level three and then level two you know you can just do all of these different nuanced things and the options also allow you to turn off friendly fire hmm. which is another way that you can like gradate uh, get a gradation in the difficulty curve so basically they just said like make it exactly the game the versus game you want it to be you know and uh, and I really appreciate that because, again, you know, it makes it incredibly approachable. And I think that one of the reasons why Smash is so popular is because the, like you said, it's easy to learn, difficult to master, is that the game's literacy for entry is nearly zero, you know? Like, basically, if you can even halfway platform, you can get through this, especially because... And so, like, let's say that you have a near zero games literacy, which you do. Um, and, like, I have an amazing games literacy, which I do. Um, we could... at, at this point, this is just not a hypothetical, then, in your mind. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, yeah, but let's just say that, uh, you know, you're like, like, you have a low games literacy. I have a high games literacy. We can both play this game at the same time 
and have a good time because I would just we would just put ourselves on a team together, and so we're not murdering each other, and then put level nine computers or whatever we think is appropriate or acceptable. I mean, I could even put in a level nine computer and a level two computer and be like, this level nine computer, you stay away from him. Mm -hmm. I'll take on the level nine. You fight the level two. Well, and did the, cause I didn't mess with versus as much as I messed with the story. Cause I just, I wanted to see some of those mixed up elements. Um, can you vary stock in versus like, could I have five and you have one? No, um, you, you, everybody gets the same number of that's, stocks. That's what I thought. But I mean, even if you wanted to, I mean, this this is definitely getting meta into it. <laughs> but like, you could definitely clutch that on the back end and basically say, you know, I'm going to give us five stock, but we're going to do versus. And if you kill me once, then we're, we'll just call it, right. you know, or, or or what have you. You know, like if if I knew that, you know, obviously I have like I can run circles around somebody. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, I just I, I really think that it's very, very difficult to create a game where two people who have extraordinary disparate skill sets can play at the same time and be challenged, you know? Well, and I, again, like I, I feel like when we review certain Nintendo games, it's like a lot of like breaking our arms, patting Nintendo on the back. Like everybody knows <laughs> Nintendo's good at what they do, right? But like there, there yeah, are certain things reason why they're still around. Yeah. And have, you know, like a 180 year old company or something. Um, seriously, they used to make playing cards. Um, <laughs> yeah, weird. Um, but, uh, one of the things that I think is, uh, subtle, uh, and, and they don't usually do, which is kind of unique to the smash series. Cause it wasn't as profound in, OG Smash, but it, it's just gotten more pronounced over time, is uh, Nintendo usually does not show up and say, oh, hey, pick your difficulty and then decide this and then decide that and then you flip through these other options and see which items on the menu you like, right? Like Nintendo shows up with an experience and they say, okay, here is the experience. And if you're really, really awesome, then you can have these other secret side experiences, or you can find all of these obvious ways we built in for you to challenge yourself. But if you're not that kind of player, or you don't have that game's literacy, then you just breeze right past all that stuff. And you might not even know it was there, right? You might not even know that extra challenge was an option. So you don't feel bad that you couldn't do it. And that's a thing that Nintendo absolutely excels at. Smash is like, they said, what if we gave you basically all of the knobs and levers on the game engine and let you tweak them? And that kind of experience is often uh, off-putting and overwhelming for someone with a low games literacy or someone who doesn't like a style of game and like, like, oh, I'd like to try this game, but oh my God, so many options. And yet somehow they give you out of the box the appropriate default experience and so if you want to ignore all of that knob turning and lever pulling, you totally can. And that's yep. kind of masterful that they can say, you know, here is here is the experience as designed. And if mm-hmm. you just turn your head a little bit to the right, you will see 30,000 knobs you can turn. <laughs> and it's like, oh, but you don't like knobs? Okay, just look over here. Everything's fine. Just ignore the knobs, right? And And I think that's like its own kind of masterful balancing act to say for someone who's like i want you know because like you couldn't do this in og smash but like someone who's like i want to control the stock how long the battle is what items appear what my starting damage is what their starting damage is how difficult the computer is and 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 what you know what items you start with and 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 like if you want that experience it is now accessible to you but most people don't most people want to sit down grab the good controller, make sure their friend gets the sort of broken controller and then Mm -hmm. just beat the crap out of each other. And if you, and you can do that with no setup because the default is that the default is sit down and have fun, which is fantastic. And that being said, unless you have anything else in mechanics, you want to ask the big question? Uh, I do want to mention one other thing. Um, I have a section in my notes uh, that the header is random nonsense and uh, sometimes nothing goes in there because I know it's going to get worked out in, in the other parts we're going to talk about. But um, this is a 3D game and mm-hmm. uh, 3D games of this era really wanted you to know they were 3D games. And so when you pause Smash, you have control over the camera, which is mm-hmm. cool, right? Like you can 
pause it and then see like, oh man, look, I'm smashing this dude with my beam sword with my lightsaber. And, and like, it's, it looks super cool and I can like see it from these different angles. And, and that's a neat thing to be able to do. Uh, when you win a fight, the camera zooms in and kind of rotates a little bit to mm-hmm. one side, but you can't control it. Like it goes to wherever its destination is and it stops there. And man, some characters have like a lot of flippy moves where they're often like back flipping, which means I ended a lot of fights with upskirt shots. Like nice. a lot of fights were staring like right up Pikachu's legs, like hmm. almost this, like a this, disconcertingly regular frequency. <laughs> see, that's interesting because I didn't run into that at all. So I think it's you. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I just, I mean, look, man, my, look, my hey, play style just judge, engenders that you know? kind of finishing snapshot, I guess. <laughs> Look, man, I'm not. I'm not here to judge, man. You're not hurting anybody. I'm not here to be a goalie. I'm. Yeah, I'm here to either assist or get out of the way, man. You like, you you, you like you like seeing Pikachu do his little barrel rolls and stuff. You know what, man? You do you. Mm-hmm. You know, like just love Pikachu. That's fine. But most importantly, man, love yourself. You know, <laughs> because you can't really love Pikachu until you love yourself. Until you love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right now, now we can ask the big question. Okay, so did it hold up? Uh, yeah, it did, and this is surprising to me because <laughs> all of my nostalgia goggles are for Melee, right? And I know that Melee holds up because I've played Melee not that long ago. Um, Brawl, in my mind, never held up because it was unbalanced from the word go, and I didn't like it. And and Ultimate, I've been having an absolutely fantastic time with. We'll see if it bears the test of time i mean it's still like new and exciting um but i think that relationship has some legs it really seems like they worked hard to balance the experience mostly um going back to og smash which i have played a few times before but not with this level of intensity there was a lot of concern in my mind that i was like it's not going to be melee which is shiny in my memory and it's not going to be ultimate which is shiny in my present life i was like this is this is going to be really brutal. And I don't think I enjoyed it because I set my expectations low. I think I enjoyed it because all of the reasons melee and ultimate are good all started here. So much of what's in those games is a hundred percent here, right? Like the difference in the levels, the difference in the music, the difference in the visuals, the difference in the fighting styles, like the, the silly items that just show up out of nowhere and totally can change the tide of combat. Like, all of that stuff was present from day one in OG smash and then got refined and tweaked over time, which I appreciate. But this game, despite the Cronenberg characters is really fun. <laughs> like I would absolutely just sit down and play this for funsies today. Yeah, actually. Um, so I, I agree. I think it absolutely holds up. I think that um, for me personally, because a lot of times I'll be like, Oh, well I, I, you know, like go play this game so that we can see where these modern titles come from. I would honestly say, play this game if the modern titles are a little overwhelming for you you know like if there's just a lot like you know well you got your side b you got your ultimate you got this and you know you gotta manage like like there's a lot there 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 has definitely been in in again i haven't played ultimate but in the more recent titles more accretion which allows for a greater depth of play i still think the the level of entry is super low but if somebody's just kind of like yeah you know i never really got into those games because there's just a lot going on you know have you tried playing the original because it's it is exactly like those other games there is just less to it because you know well, and it was just and you can't stumble upon the dashboard with 30,000 knobs because the dashboard has like 10 knobs even to the point of like your example of Captain Falcon and Ganondorf fighting very similarly like even that like you don't have to make the decision of like oh do I want Ganondorf or do I want Captain Falcon they're kind of similar I'm not sure which one I like more no Every single character in OG Smash is completely different. So you're not doing the, do I want, you know, ketchup cats up? Do I want dark red or dark er red? <laughs> like they're distinct. So that crisis of choice doesn't overwhelm you. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I believe it absolutely held up. And I mean, like, honestly, I think that, you know, Melee will always hold a special part, special place in my heart. But OG Smash, I mean, this game's pretty smashing. The curtain falls, the music plays, the credits roll, then it all fades to black.
and you're left by yourself. The fanfare is gone. There's no player two there by your side to share victories won. But as you slowly progress down the hall to your bed, a few great events leak back into your head. From the time that you spent traversing the land, battling evil, fighting the darkness, just sword in hand, your memories creep in with the end of a smile. You realize again.